on today we look at these uh, very attractive uh, radios i think anyway um from a company called lenhart um these are the poppy fs802 this company was more famous for making tvs and radios i believe back in germany there um uh, you can roughly uh, do the translation on the side there it's an eight transistor radio with an output of 100 milliwatts uh single channel am only and these i believe were all manufactured on the uh the same frequency as 27.125 megahertz and it used a a slightly lower rated crystal because of the 455 kilohertz if uh, that's why you'll see when you open it up there's two different uh, crystals in there anyway the the um the manufacturer of these as i said it's a metal body front with a chrome finish and a metal body rear with a sort of matte black very nice um uh, textured sort of finish on the back of it with a very sturdy indeed um uh, metallic uh, battery flap there so no chance of the uh, battery dropping out of this one and it um it's literally just press fitted as it's all metal and it sits nicely now the only thing that wasn't so great on this was the nine volt battery uh, as you'll see in a little bit it doesn't sit very well in there but you'll see from this example that this radio is clearly not a radio from the 1960s it's amazing how different the components look just some 10 years later uh, as I said, with this model being from 1976. Now, I couldn't find any circuit diagrams for this radio, so I was flying a little bit blind uh, with this one, but you can see here how sort of ill-fitting the battery is. Maybe some of the early PP3s um, were uh, a little bit smaller, not quite as deep. Uh, maybe that's the reason for it. And, uh, of course, you know, this radio not being probably used for a fair amount of time had the usual uh, crackly uh, on-off problem as you can hear and uh, something that uh, you'll see a little bit later in the video which uh, is fairly easily sorted out uh, using a little bit of switch cleaner now of course um, with both of these radios being identical and in fairly good condition one has a slight scuff on it as you can see at the top there where it's been dropped and I think it did affect the switch on this one so this this switch was problematic um, but I did actually, you'll see I sorted that later on in the video and you'll see what I did to fix that problem. So a slight, slight um, shame that that's happened. Anyway, a single screw to hold the back of the case on. And like I said, because it's uh, metal, it presses together nicely. And you'll see from the inside, although these radios uh, were German, I, I'm, I'm not sure if they were manufactured in Germany. It's possible. It's very possible because the as you'll see here, the quality of manufacture is absolutely top notch. It really is. It's very nicely with the screen printed uh, graphics over the top of the board as well. It'd be really nice to get a wiring diagram. If anyone does have a wiring diagram, I will send you some coins for it. So uh, I would like to get a wiring diagram for it. I've already checked the usual places and couldn't see there was one available. But um, with a wiring diagram, diagram, I can certainly set these radios up nicely. Uh, a little bit trickier without a wiring diagram anyway. Like I say, a metal body front and a, and a metal body rear. And uh, this particular switch had a little bit of an issue with it. And uh, this is the contact cleaner that I use. A lot of people use Servisol, but I've always used this. Now, the one thing to note with all of these cleaners is try and avoid getting it on any of the plastics for the case. So if you've got particularly a matte black case or on an old walkie-talkie, sometimes the switch cleaner can actually mark it. So just be a bit careful not to get any of that on any of the decorative finishes of the radio because it can stain. Okay. We fix that crackle, as you can hear there, that's all fine. So I moved on uh, to sort the second radio, which straight out of the box I could see had a problem with the antenna here. You can see obviously someone's had this apart. It may have been caused by it being dropped, but obviously I needed to address that. They'd had it apart and lost the locking washer. Now luckily, I've got a set of locking washers I've had in a drawer for 30 odd years, and I, uh, I managed to, to fix that issue there. And a quick cleanup of the battery terminals, and as you can see from the field strength meter on the first radio, it absolutely off the scale in comparison to the uh, previous radios I've tested here. So RF-wise, these are looking pretty powerful. Now, on this particular radio, the on-off switch was very intermittent, so I decided to take the actual board out of the radio. And, and again, it's, it's a nicely soldered and nicely made board. Here it looks like it's got a lacquer on the back of the board. Now, that switch contact there was intermittent. You can see there where it opens and closes the switch contact at the side, and a bit of digging around with the meter, uh, I managed to fix it. Right, that's about as good as I can do. I haven't got any AM signal generators or any other... Uh, 
test gear for testing uh, these AM radios. I've, uh, I'm all geared up for FM only, unfortunately. Uh, however, taking these radios apart, this radio they've got the scuff on it, and they've got the intermittent switch problem. It may have been how that switch got damaged. I've now fixed the switch, that's fine. But somebody had been in there with screwdrivers and twiddled it such that this wasn't uh, transmitting properly uh, or receiving properly. So I tested this one. Again, now the only thing I have I've got to test this against is this, the 840, um, which what I did was, and you, you guys can do this as well if you have an AM set, is I popped it through an attenuator in the back of the radio there to some crock clips, and then I used that as a signal generator, and obviously a combination of that and the SDR, SDR uh, Uno there, uh, to actually work out if these things were on frequency and so yeah I've basically got them working after a fashion I mean they could probably do with a proper professional tune but these should be good enough for a test so um, we'll take these out tomorrow and we'll see how they compare right we brought the radios to the spot we were at the other night and uh, we're going to try these in the day they've got some building work going on over there but we'll try our best anyway here's my little tester say hello come around here hello right you ready then mr radio tester show them the radio yeah, it's a little bit windy today, but we'll try our best, eh? Right, let's give it a go. Right, here we go. Turn the volume up a little bit. Tyler's just up there at the top. By that lamppost, past those people. All right, Tyler, can you hear me okay? Give us a quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Okay, it's a little bit quiet. I don't know how well this is going to work. I'll, work. I'll move a bit further down. You just wait there, okay? okay. Oh, you can hear the receiver's uh, suffering with a bit of local noise here. We'll try again. He's, he's down there. All right, Tyler, can you hear me now, okay? Okay, I'm just going to put the scanner on to see what it sounds like on the scanner, okay? So we're probably going to wrap this one up. I think the receive uh, side of these needs a tweak and the transmit possibly. But, you know, time consuming that is and uh, my time is money. So I think we'll call it a day. But I think they performed quite similar to probably not as well as the, um, as the party radios we had anyway. So um, could you hear me, Tyler? Yes. Yeah, you could hear me. But when I was furthest away, you couldn't hear me very well, no? I can sometimes hear you, but not all the time. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, to be fair, they've done pretty well. So you just want to turn the radio around so we can see it. There we go. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Okay, we'll catch you on the next one.